Hey there. So let's say you have to build a content model for a conference that is about kitchen improvisation. You want to turn your talk into scannable quality content for the long term after the conference is done. And you want to allow the team to work together, make last minute changes and prevent stale and correct information. This seems like the perfect example for structured content and content modeling and content designing. And you could get together in FigJam, this whiteboarding tool with your team, and figure out what are the open questions you may have, uh, such as, should a talk have multiple speakers? Are we going to have multiple content tracks? And other teasing questions that may open up your team to discussion about, eventually, what are the content models and entities that you may have for your conference. You would go about this collaboratively and you're going to join inputs from all sorts of stakeholders and you're going to use comments, you're going to use stickers and just generally have a nice time doing a workshop that is collaborative at its core. But then the process of moving that over to your content model and your content management system is usually going to involve someone alone opening up a Google Sheet and starting writing what are going to be the properties and attributes of each of these models, then passing that down over to developers who are then going to implement that in content management systems. So after we have the high level view of our model, the process from there is usually not collaborative. The goal with TAPI is to help make it so. So let's start giving more color to this high level view of our content model by modeling exactly how a talk or session should look like in terms of the data should hold and how editors will actually feed that uh, in our content management system. So we're going to start by going to the bottom bar, the furthest right button. When we click on that, we're going to be presented with a search bar and search for TAPI or T-A-P-I. Then we add the widget. And now we can start by modeling our talk or session. So talk or session. Um, I'm going to assign an identifier that is going to be used as the database key for this content model. And I'm going to just call it talk. It's a document. Uh, and editors can add multiple ones because we intend to have multiple talks. All right, so let's start by adding an attribute for the talk title. And it's a required attribute. Let's add another one. And that being the speaker. So speaker. And then we decided during our questions and just generally problem solving that we should allow our uh, speakers, our editors to add multiple speakers to a talk. So they can add multiple. And this one is required. And now let's choose what document type this should reference. So I'm going to click on create a new one. And right off the bat, TAP is going to create a new one for you. And now we're going to call this document speaker. Now speaker is going to have a name, a rich text for their bio, um, and an image. So photo. Uh, the image is required. The name is required, but not the bio. But the bio, perhaps I want to say that it's optional, but highly encouraged. Right, so we have the seeds of our document model. Uh, perhaps we also want to right now focus on adding the ingredients. So let's also had, have ingredients and cooking styles as our um, way of tagging our talks. So later we can make the most out of them. So we can make a search in our website or in our mobile app, or uh, we can have like a interesting recurring newsletter that pulls in all of the cooking styles and uh, what are the best methods and talks and articles about that. So we're going to reference them in a tags feud. And then, of course, we could have a separate ingredients feud and a separate cooking styles. This is the sort of discussion that your team is going to have as you are editing your content model together in TAPI. So I'm going to allow tags to be multiple, so editors can add multiple ones. 
they are not required and first I'm going to reference the ingredients so let's call ingredients and ingredients for now let's just say they have a name um, and they are required I'm gonna do the same thing same structure for our uh, cooking styles so you can see I just copied and pasted them cooking style and again we just have a name but then from tags we're also gonna point to cooking styles so let's say we're good for now I'm not gonna bore you with going through the full process um, of doing all of these but uh, once we're done we can click on export and then we can choose what is the type of export that we want either the full project or a specific model so say for now I'm just going to do the specific model so you can see um, what is the type of result that we get so right now I selected Senri.io so I get the exact uh, schema the Senri schema for this talk or session we it includes the reference to the ingredient the cooking style um, it includes the speakers uh, field that has a reference to a speaker um, or we can export the full project and uh, just go through the validation errors that we may potentially have. In this case, they're just warnings. They're just there to say, hey, you didn't add this explicit ID or data identifier for each of these models. So perhaps you should do so. So I can go in here and just say speaker. Or Yeah, but for now, I'm good with that. Uh, it's a good trade-off and I'm naming my project Kitchen Improv Conference. I could add a uh, send project ID. Right now I'm just gonna do demo and demo. And then of course you can uh, untoggle uh, the anonymized project data if you don't want to share that. Uh, and once you're done, you get a zip file, file with your whole Sanity project ready to go, ready to install and start using and populating it with your content. So there you have it. You've seen how I've used Typey to build a tiny content model for a conference. And I'm seeing it visually as I go. I can comment out of like, perhaps we should add a description to talk titles. And as I am editing my content model together with my team, we can make use of FigGem's great collaboration features to make sure we are on the same track, we are aligned, and we're building the best content model that we can possibly create. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feature requests, please reach out at tepi at hdoro.dev and it will be a pleasure to talk to you. Bye-bye.